our marvelous orchestra, headed by Peter Matz. We have Harvey Corman and Vicki Lawrence and Tim Conway, and our special guest is Steve Lawrence. <laughs> Television City in Hollywood. It's the Carol Burnett Show. It's Harvey Norman. Vicki Lawrence. And Tim Conway. Well, here you are, madam, and thank you for shopping Bernard's Bouterie. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Andrews, I'm going to lunch. Come out here and watch the store till I get back. Andrews, get out here! Yell like that. I'll be back in one hour, and I'll keep an eye on the store. Wow, wow. Right, I'll get her. La di da di da. It talks. I got the money. He's got money. Going. Hey, where's the power? He's gone. <laughs> I must be imagining things on the uh, What can I do for you? You can get off my foot. <laughs> it hurts. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm stepping on my foot. All right, can I? Can I help you? Yeah, I want to buy some slippers. How many? Two. <laughs> what color? Blue. Yeah. Well, why don't you have a seat, cutie? <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> I'll just uh, measure right up here, or you will get right to her. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here, right, just give me your, uh, give me your foot here. Let's check uh, okay. what size you wear. Well, I don't know. Well, uh, <laughs> probably in your shoe here. Ow. Uh, I'll have it in a minute. Don't hurt. I 
I'm huh? gonna split it. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. I'll get it for you. I got it right in here. I'll just, you hold on to that. Okay. Whoa. I'm just getting in up here and check them out for you. Okay. See when you... Help me up here. I'm gonna get this ladder down the other end there. You okay. just you pull on it. You know? I'll give her a push. Oh, you want me to pull it down there? All right now. You man. got it. And we'll uh <laughs> be right there. Uh, uh, you want blue? Yeah, you my slippers up there. All right, I'll get them. Okay. Yeah. You be careful now, uh, cutie. be down the other end. You want to oh. shove me down there? Okay. And then, uh, <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> Hell. What are you doing down there? Hell. <laughs> said the blue slippers was down here. What are you doing hanging around up there for? Ladder. I think I'm out of blue slippers. Yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah. Well, is there well, any other color you want? Well, no. Because mm. <laughs> I got a blue bathrobe. Oh. Well, I got a blue bathrobe, too. You do? Right. Well, what color are your slippers? Blue. What do you see? Well, well, I'll look in the back room. Okay. See if I got them. Don't go away now. Well, I can't go too far. Right. Well, I'll be here. I sure hope you got them, because I got this blue bathrobe. I wanted to match my bathrobe, so I'll look real nice. <laughs> hey, would you cut that out? I got a pair here. I, I found a pair. I hope I don't just get those right here. Yeah. Let's try them on. Toes ain't gone. Huh? You said I wouldn't need oh. slippers if my toes was gone. Mm. <laughs> toes ain't gone. My toes are in the front. Right. Oh. Get her up here. We'll try this on. Well, you ain't gonna hurt me no oh, more, no, right? Because no. I've been hurt a lot. I know. Yeah. Okay. Boy, you, you got some nice looking leg there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you trying to pick me up? Search me. <laughs> hey, uh, how about having some lunch with me? Where at? Right in the back room. I got some sandwiches. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right in here. Boy, you're gonna like that. Say, uh, huh? in the back room, you uh, and me, huh? Right. Can you promise me that you ain't gonna try to get fresh with me? No. Okay. Right. <laughs> Oh!
I'm Ferguson, homicide. It's okay, I'll take it from here. That's a nice profile. There's some guy out here who insists on coming in. I am not some guy, you twip. I'm Waldo Dylecker, famous newspaper columnist, urbane sophisticate, sought-after party guest, and closet animal lover. <laughs> I'm Lieutenant Ferguson, homicide. Tell me, Ferguson, how did it happen? Well, that poor floozy got blasted in the kisser by a shotgun. Flora was not a floozy. is no floozy at all, I swear. Flora was superb. She was a combination of fire, ice, and wind. She, she had class. She had one hell of a theme song. <laughs> I freeze. All right, sister. Who are you? I'm Tessie, the cleaning woman, and I'm proud of it. My mother was a cleaning woman, and she was proud of it, so I ain't ashamed of it. But it ain't easy scrubbing and cleaning up after a bunch of snob olas who never give you a kind word. But let me tell you this, Miss Flora was the exception to that. She was kind and good and generous, rest her soul. What would a lousy flatfoot like you know about that? I ain't scared of you. I hate cops. I spit at cops. Cops smell worse than a dog's laundry. <laughs> I'm paid up to the end of the week, so I'm putting in my time. That's the way Miss Flora would have wanted it. And if you don't like it, you can lock me up and grill me, hang me by my thumbs, and give me the electric chair. I don't care if you shoot me in the back. Go ahead and shoot me. I know you want to shoot me. Please don't shoot me. So you won't talk, eh? <laughs> Everybody was pretty gaga about this Flora, huh? Flora is the face in the picture here. Why, <laughs> oh, that floozy must have had some line of gab. You don't fool me, Ferguson. Ever since you glommed that picture and heard a theme song, you've fallen madly, passionately in love with Flora. I'm afraid it's a little late for that, isn't it, Lieutenant? Finally find a woman I can fall in love with, and what happens? Somebody knocks her off. Don't worry, baby. I'll find out who killed you if it takes me the rest of my life.
How do you do, ma'am? Uh, I'm uh, Lieutenant Ferguson, homicide. Hello. How'd you do? I uh, think you better read this. Oh, no. <laughs> this is preposterous. But I must say, I always agree with dear Abby. <laughs> if relatives move in with you for weeks on end, you have to tell them to get out straight from the shoulder. Uh, this, uh, this article here. Oh, that, that yes. one down there? I always read Dear Abby first. <laughs> Why, this is preposterous. Who would want to murder a glorious creature like me? You know something? I don't think it was you. I think somebody else was murdered. Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> Lie down. I beg your pardon? Strictly police business, ma'am. Oh, I see. Got my carpet all yicky. <laughs> it's definitely not you, I'll tell you. Of course not. It's my ex roommate, Cookie Billingham. I'd know her anywhere. Better her than you. I suppose you can't help doing this, me being what I am, but please don't think that a little kiss will lead to a big no-no. I don't understand, Flora. How can I explain to you what you mean to me? He's a computing <laughs> Ferguson, Ferguson, Ferguson. Oh, Flora, Flora, Flora. Oh, you're what I've been searching for all my life. A man with the same theme song. Oh. <laughs> it's her! It's her! It's her! It's her! It's her! It's her! Is it her? <laughs> yes, yes, Tessie, dear, it's her. Me, I, Tessie. Tessie, I'm not dead. See, get a hold of yourself. Everything's fine now, dear. Now, why don't you go put on your uniform? Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Flora. You're okay now? Yes, I'm fine. Good. I'm sorry, forgive me. I'll That's change right away. All right, Tessie. <laughs> Poor dear Tessie, always such a devoted simp. <laughs> but who can blame her? I believe I left my newspaper. It's her! It's her! It's her! It's her! Waldo, Waldo, darling. Forgive my hysteria, Flora, but to find you not only alive, but alive in the tawdry embrace of this cynical police person was a bit much. Tawdry embrace? <laughs> Waldo, I have something firm and testy to say to you. Bug off. <laughs> Very well, Ferguson. She's all yours. Thank you. No. Go ahead. Kiss your dippy heads off. I'm leaving. Here I go. Darling, mm -hmm. I have to find who killed you, or whoever. Why bother? As long as it wasn't me, what the dickens? Well, the killer is still on the loose. That means he can strike again. Well, in that case, bother. 
I'll be just outside the door. All right, my darling. Where will you be? Just outside the door. Right outside the door. You get yourself some rest. I will. How far away will you be? Just outside the door. Just a lip away? A lip away. <laughs> What a pleasant surprise. I've always loved you, Flora. Always. But you never loved me. Never, never, never. Waldo, look at it this way. Would I love you anymore if you pull the trigger? When you turned me down, I knew you'd live to regret it. So to spare you a life of sorrow, I killed you. But it wasn't you. No, it, it was my roommate, Cookie Billingham. That nit? Waldo, it's bad enough that you killed her. You don't have to badmouth her, too. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Flora. Well, of course I forgive you. Thank you. Now let's proceed. Oh, dear. I can't have you. No one can. Well, if you feel that way, you can have me. <laughs> You've made me the happiest. Why couldn't you knock? Oh. 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 Oh, I'll, I'll get a I'll get a doctor. Don't move, darling. All right. <laughs> no, it's, it's too late. <coughs> oh, isn't it strange, Fergie? How things never work out in life. I mean, even the tiny little things, like like going to pick up your laundry. <laughs> they say pick it up on Thursday, and it's never ready till Monday. I know it's true. Tell you to pick it up on Monday. It's never ready till Thursday. <laughs> I've got one. How about when you when you get a terrific outfit that you're gonna wear to a swanky party and when you get there the hostess is wearing the same outfit? I know it's happened to me more than once. <laughs> You make a date for golf, and you can bet your life it rains. Try to throw a party, and the guy upstairs complains. I guess I'll go through life just catching colds and missing trains. Oh, mm. everything happens to me. Shall we? Quick, call a doctor! I'm afraid it's too late for her. But for you, as long as I'm around, you've got nothing to worry about. I'll be here to take care of you. Life is funny, you know. Nothing ever comes out the way you want it to. Some things come out the way you want them to. The little things like picking up the laundry. When they say pick it up on Thursday, it's never ready till Monday. I've seen you and Edie in nightclubs in Las Vegas yeah. perform and everything. You always kid a whole lot about your married life. Is any of that uh, well, true? Huh? Well, we exaggerate a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's, that's, that's one of our big problems. You know, I, I can think of plenty of ways that, that Edie annoys me, but it's, it's hard for her to think of anything annoying that I do. I mean, <laughs> well, I guess it would be for any woman, really. You know. <laughs> You're a closet chauvinist. <laughs> no, I'm not saying that uh, men are any better than women. I'm just saying that 
women are basically more annoying, that's all. <laughs> oh. There's about 50% of them that agree, I think. <laughs> No, well, I... if a woman isn't more annoying, how come that the average wife outlives the average husband? Maybe it's because the average husband spends more than the average time running around with the average girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not really fair. You yeah. Know. Well, men are responsible for some of the nicest things that women have. Like what? Well, mini skirts, bikinis, black negligees. Girdles, dishpan hands, and maternity clothes. Well, of all the things that men do for women, I think that they ask for very little in return. Yeah, but they always ask it before coffee in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> One lump or two, my dear. <laughs> well, I, I still think that women are more aggravated. Men are, men are. Women are, women are. Men, men, men. The way she keeps the TV set on morning, afternoon, and night. The way he fiddles with the color when she's finally got it right. The way she finishes an argument by turning on the tears. The way he puts off doing anything around the house for years. Oh, 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 oh. the ways a man can aggravate a woman. The ways a woman can aggravate a man The way she drags him to a movie When there's a game he wants to watch The way he waits till dinner's ready Then he wants another scotch The way she undercooks the bacon And overcooks the eggs The way he makes a point of noticing Another woman's legs Oh, 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 oh. The ways a man can aggravate a woman the ways a woman can aggravate a man. His golf, the bane of her existence. Her bridge, her tuna fish surprise. His jokes, her folks, his friends. The, the aggravating, aggravating way he starts the story she ends. The way he takes her to a party and then leaves her all alone. He buys her 50 kinds of perfume, but she uses his cologne. The way he tries to do the hustle and thinks that he's a whiz. The way she passes up a highball and then guzzles half of his. Oh, no. Oh. No, no. The ways a man can aggravate a woman. The ways a woman can aggravate a man. <laughs> The way she buys those kitchen gadgets, plugs them in and blows a fuse. The way he buys those tape recorders that he never learns to use. The way she sends him on an errand and writes down the wrong address. The way he fixes Sunday breakfast and lets her clean up the mess. Oh, yeah! The ways a man can aggravate a woman. The ways a woman can aggravate a man. She seems the different girl than the girl who was his bride. The way your own sweet Dr. Jekyll can turn into Mr. Hyde. It's been a battle of the sexes ever since the world began. But when you get it all together, there is nothing sweeter than all. The ways a man can aggravate a woman. The ways a woman can aggravate. Not me. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say, I wonder if you'd mind if I shared this table with you. Well, not at all. It'd be my pleasure. Sit right down and enjoy your meal. Thank you so much. Ah. Cafeteria is certainly crowded today, isn't it? I noticed that myself as I came in here. Yes, I did. Yes. Well, it's a good place to eat. That's probably why it's crowded. Yeah. Boy, that lasagna looks real good. Mm -hmm. Oh, so does your spaghetti. Yeah, it is. But, um... They don't put enough sauce on this, you know, that's the trouble. As a matter of fact, I think I'm gonna get a little more sauce. I'll be right back. Oh, right. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry, but somebody's sitting there. Yeah, I know. I am. <laughs> no, you, you don't understand. You see, there was this young man eating spaghetti. Lady, and... I just want to eat my lunch. I don't want to hear no Italian jokes, okay? <laughs> Um, excuse me very much, but, uh, I was sitting there. You're absolutely right. You were sitting here. Now I am sitting here. I know, but then you don't seem to understand. I had my very body on that chair before you came here. <laughs> oh, that's, uh... That's my chair. This is your chair, then, uh, Mr., um... Uh... Um, Ellsworth, Marvin Ellsworth. Ellsworth, <laughs> well... Well, I don't seem to see your name on any place on this chair, Mr. Ellsworth. Well, I don't mean that I actually took a brush and sketched out my name on the chair. No, yeah, well, I didn't think so. Get out of here. All right. All right. Well, that is the rudest thing I've ever seen. Oh, that's all right. Don't worry. I don't mind standing up here and eating. It'd be just fine. I love this thing. No, Mr. Ellsworth, I insist you take my seat. Oh, I couldn't do that. No, no I no. insist. After no. all, you were nice enough to let me share the table with you. I please. I, I please. Don't worry no, about it. I feel me. terrible. You must sit down. Please, I insist. All right, thank you. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, uh, no, no, listen now. He was sitting there. That's his chair. If this is his chair, how come he ain't sitting in it? Yeah, how come you ain't sitting in it? <laughs> now, you just keep out of this, mister. Hey, you keep out of this. Don't mind these two. I think they just came off a rubber ranch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, kind of cute. What's your name? Uh, want to try to guess. Uh, begins with a K. King Kong? <laughs> Why don't you go get an estimate on a mouth lift? All right, just a minute. Hold on here. Don't... Yeah, I'm going to take Tom Thumb here with you. Name's Kenny, sweetheart. What's yours? Flossie, pleased to meet you, Kitty. Nice meeting you. Hey, that apple pie looks good. I think I'm gonna get me some. And stay out of this chair, you understand? You just sit right down there and you eat your lunch. Are you kidding? Do you hear the voice that he had, the big booming? I sit there, he'd punch me right in the schnoz. All right, I'm gonna stand right up here. All right, then. then I will sit down here. Oh, you're going to do that to gonna us. Gonna get involved. Kitty ain't gonna like you sitting in his chair. Butt out, Flossie. <laughs> hey, 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 lady, that's my chair. Oh, it is. Gee, I don't see where it, uh, in any place on this chair says, uh, Mr. Obnoxious. Oh, wow. 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 I guess she told you off, boy. <laughs> you keep out of this. All right. Uh, look, yeah, you know, I noticed outside there's a bunch of sailors hanging around the corner there. I think they're looking for... Well, I guess I'll be running along. <laughs> that was a dirty trick. Yeah. Well, listen, you want to get something in this life, dear, you got to use your head. <laughs> Would you mind passing me the maple syrup, please? Hmm? Yeah. Thank you so much. La -di -da -di -da. <laughs> Maple syrup on lasagna? Well, of course it brings out the taste of the tomato paste. And of course it's very delicious with some pickle relish. What? And, oh, is that mayonnaise? Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> and uh, horseradish is very tasty. Um, Lasagna along with the maple syrup and has sour cream and some chives and oh. perhaps a little more syrup to oh. take off. Oh. 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 I guess I showed him. Yeah. <laughs> Golly. Ooh, except now I don't have anything to eat. Oh, well, for crying out loud. Here, you take my spaghetti. Oh, no, I couldn't, Mr. Go Ellsworth. All right, no, right. Well, what are you going fun. to eat? Well, I'll just eat this lasagna. <laughs> Yeah, I love it this way, uh, as far as, uh, except for the mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? Yeah. I like a lot more on there. Like, oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Be sure and be with us next week when our guest will be Sammy Davis, Jr. I'm so glad we had this time together. Just to have a laugh or sing a song 
seems we just get started and before you know it comes the time we have to say so long good night Store manager was played by Dick Patterson. The preceding program was recorded before a live audience.